Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, Database Interactions with WP Query and WPDB. Uh, this is a pretty big set. Uh, this is a pretty big topic because it's actually two different topics. A little ambitious with the plan here. So uh, the subtitle for this might be a little more accurate as to what I'm going to actually go over. An introduction to WordPress database objects for developers. Uh, my name is Jonathan Daggerhart, and I develop in WordPress and Drupal. I work for a company, Educational Partners International, where we do J1 visa application processing. Uh, I use WordPress both personally and professionally for a long time, and I de develop and maintain plugins. The slides I'm going to be going through today have a lot of code on them. So if you're at the back, you can visit the daggerhart.com blog and uh, get the slides on your local computer. Y yes, yes. Um, uh, the, we'll be going through three main sections. The first one's a real broad overview of databases, very broad. After each section, I'll pause and ask for questions. So let's get started. What is a database? I told you it was going to be broad. Uh, just in case some people accidentally ended up in this room, I thought I'd cover the very basics. So if you know what a spreadsheet is, you're really close to knowing what a database is. Um, the, whole, the whole file is the database itself. You have columns, you have rows, and depending on if you're in Google or Microsoft, the sheet or the workbook is like a table. And if you've never really thought about what a database is, uh, this simple analogy can go a really long way. So jumping right in, we are going to design our own database table real quick. Uh, just theoretically at the moment, and it is going to be for the purpose of contact form submissions. So in this database, we are going to record the contact's name, their email address, a short message to us, and for our own sanity, we're going to keep a unique ID for each submission. All right. In an Excel or in a spreadsheet, that database table might look a lot like this. All we've done is named our columns, ID, name, email, message. And in PHP MyAdmin, which is a UI for managing an actual MySQL database, that same table would look a lot like this. Same columns, rows, everything should be pretty familiar. So the, data, the way that we get that we as developers from over here get data from the database over here is we ask it a question in a language that it recognizes. The structured query language is kind of a generic syntax for different databases. Um, and they'll be slightly different depending on what type of database you're using. But in general, these concepts, will, you'll find that they apply over and over again. What we're going to ask the database is to select for us a data cell from a column. Um, and if we want a very specific row or subset of rows, then we'll say select the database cells from, from this table. Oh, wait. Man, I did it already. Uh, so this should be table. All right. Select, <laughs> select data cells from a table where a, uh, where a column is equal to something. This is where we get into very specific rows. All right, so if I were to execute a very, this same SQL query in PHP MyAdmin, it would return to me the name and the email uh, for the submission row where the name is equal to John. Very simple. Questions. Any questions about what a database is or how it's organized? Because it's about to get fast. All right? Here we go. What is WPDB? Uh, WPDB is a uh, globally instantiated WordPress object that's available uh, in PHP, and it includes a bunch of methods and properties that are extremely helpful when executing database queries in WordPress. A real simple example of that, we would access the object using the global keyword, and get results is a very common method where we can execute almost any type of SQL query. Now, before we go too much further, let's talk about when you would use this object. So in WordPress, everything that comes with core has a right way, well, should have a right way to access that data. So 
if we are going to make custom interactions with the database, uh, it really comes down to data that's not a part of core. You could certainly use this object to get core data, but that's not, in most cases, that's not going to be the right way to do it. So if we're managing our own custom database tables, say we wrote a plugin where we're going to record contact form submissions. That's a use case. If we need to interact with the data of another plugin, or for goodness sakes, if a theme provided a database table, then uh, we may need to get the data that way. Uh, if you're working with a second database, not all websites are created equal. Some of them uh, use data from many different places. Or if you need a really subset of WordPress, a really small subset of WordPress core data, or an aggregate of WordPress core data, that's not easily accessible through a function already. So, I've been trying to think of an example for like the past week. What is that subset of data? I thought it might be count the number of posts of a different um, of a different post status, but there's a function for that. Does anybody have have an example of this use case? where we might need a subset of WordPress data that's not available through a function. If not, then we might just want to mark that one off the list. All right? It's going to come up. What you're going to, here, here's, here's how it's going to go. You're going to say, man, I really need just the most recent post ID. Maybe something like that. And so you'll just write a simple SQL query, and you'll get that. And then five months later, you'll, be, you'll find, oh, there was a function for that. That's the story of your WordPress life. Okay, so now let's get into exactly how we're going to uh, use this object and its methods to get data from the table. The main select methods, uh, select being the keyword for getting data from the database, the main select methods of the object are get var, which is actually get single cell of data. Uh, everything's color coded up here. Get row for a single row. Get a column for only a column of data. And get results for roughly whatever your query asks for. Here's a simple example of git var. I'm going to say, show me the name from form submissions where the ID is equal to 5, and I get John back. The result of this, what this returns back to, uh, what this returns back to an imaginary variable, or if I printed it out, is John. So let's just keep going through these. Uh, git row. A single row from the database returned as a standard PHP object. So I will have every single column will be represented by a property of this object. And it's not going to do anything fancy for me. If I have serialized data within the database, I'll have to unserialize it myself. But uh, that's a very simple single row result. Uh, get a single column. So I want all the names from everyone from my contact form. That will return an array, a uh, numerically indexed array, of exactly the, uh, exactly the names in my table. Get results is where, is where you start to see much more flexibility in uh, what's going to be returned to you. Get results is the generic sort of select method in which you can select anything you want from get results. And it's going to come back to you in an array of objects by default. So if I, so this specific query, I say, give me every single uh, column from the form submissions database table. There's no where statement in this SQL query. So it is going to return all results. And what I get from that is an array where numerically indexed, and each item in that array is an object. And that object has a property for every column in the database table. Okay, so this is not this is not a lesson on writing SQL queries. It's not a lesson on uh, designing good database tables. Uh, this is mainly going to focus on writing the PHP involved in the correct way. So the most important method, in my opinion, of the WordPress database object that you're going to need to become real familiar with is the prepare method. Prepare is how you sanitize dynamic or untrusted data that came from likely a user or maybe an API. 
before you issue it as part of the command into, uh, that you send to the database. The way it works is a lot like sprintf, uh, and it can additionally work like vsprintf. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that, but essentially it's a string with tokens that get replaced by the arguments that you pass into the function. So let's take a little look. Uh, do you want to get hacked? Because this is how you get hacked. We have, a, uh, we have untrusted, unsanitized data uh, directly placed into my SQL statement. So if, if you have code like this on your website, maybe take a break at lunch and, uh, and review it. Because the user can submit any data it wants here. And that data could be another SQL query that drops your entire database table. So we, we don't want to do this. We never do this. Instead, we always prepare our statements. So here's the same request. Uh, prepare. We're going to pr prepare select everything from form submissions where ID is equal to an integer. This percent %d is the token for an in, uh, to, replace, to replace a value as an integer. Additionally, we have tokens for a string or for a float, decimal related stuff. So what we've done is we've told uh, the prepare method to take this data, sanitize it, and then put it into the uh, SQL query once it's safe. Then the results of the prepare method return to us as a string. Uh, the SQL variable is a string with that sanitized query, and that is what we put in to get results. Now we have safely taken untrusted dynamic data. <laughs> That's right. Uh, one more prepare for the road. So this example just shows multiple different um, parameters for the prepare method, and it's essentially the same. We are using the percent %s token because the name and the email are strings. So we need to tell the database to treat them as such. And well, let's see. Other, uh, other methods, which are much more simple, you don't really have to know SQL to use these methods. These are the um, insert, update, delete. This is the CUD of CRUD, if you will. So all we need to know is the, uh, is the table name and an array of data in which, in which the keys of this array match our column names. And in some cases, we need an array of conditions in which the keys of this array match our column names. Now, all of these, uh, both uh, get row, get results, like all of these take additional parameters. Uh, what I'm trying to emphasize here is how easy it could be. So if maybe you haven't started writing your own database interactions yet, uh, it'll feel a little more comfortable. Ultimately, this is pretty straightforward stuff. So if I were to take these values right here and pass them into update, well, I wouldn't get much of a difference. What it would say is, update table form submissions, set name equal to John, where ID equals five. So that's how you would kind of, how you would kind of read it out loud. Uh, a few properties that you're going to want to be familiar with with the uh, WordPress database object, especially if you're, if you're handling your own table of data. Number of rows. So after we run a query, the number of rows, uh, num rows is equal to the total number of rows returned by the query. So that's valuable for like a select. Um, it has counted the results for you. Uh, rows affected is the number of rows that were changed by your query. This is what you're going to use if you're going to update or delete something. If I were to say delete all rows where name equals John, uh, rows affected would be one if I only had one John in my database table. Insert ID. If I am going to if I've, if I've created a system that will automatically add new rows to the table, then after each execution of an insert, the property insert ID will be the value of an auto increment uh, column. Not going into auto increment, but just know that, they, that it exists. The prefix is the 
prefix on, your, on all your WordPress database tables as defined by the user during installation. So you've all, probably most of you have installed WordPress before and it asks you, what is your database prefix? And by default, it's WP underscore. So if you change that, then the WPDB object remembers what you, it, it, it's always available to you. It remembers what you put in during installation. And additionally, these are somewhat, uh, I didn't want to list them all, but every WordPress core table is also represented by its own property and it's, and it's already prefixed for you. I'll show a little bit of how, how we'll use those later. No, wait, I'll show now. Um, <laughs> so let's do using the uh, prefix property. <clears throat> In this example, I want to select uh, the Hello World post that comes with every WordPress install. So I'm going to select everything from the prefix as defined by the user next to the post table where ID equals one. The result, since I did a git row, the result is a standard object with a property for every column in the uh, table. Whereas I could also just use the core table name itself without the prefix is available as part of the uh, WPDB object and it has already prefixed the table name for me. So these two, these two statements are exactly the same in their result. This uh, WPDB post, if I were to print that to a screen, it would be WP underscore post. All right, that is WPDB. Brief overview. Uh, any questions? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, the question is, if I select, if I create a select query that is limited to a number of five, what will the value for num rows be? It, it'll be five. It it will be, uh, it will be the actual rows that you requested. So even though there may be a hundred available, it 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 will respect your limits. And so if you ask for 10 and there's only eight, it'll be eight. So it's not about what you ask for, it's about what is actually returned. So it sounds like row detected doesn't apply to CLC. So to get the number of total results on the limit, you need that second query? Uh, a, a number of total results. So let's say you want to, you want to know the 100 value. Okay. Well, um, I'm not exactly clear on how you can get a hundred and only five results from a query. Am I, what am I? Yeah. I'm sorry? Oh, okay. You're talking about just counting all the rows. You're okay. That would, it's, it's a different type of query. So you'll say, yeah, select count, uh, and the wild card for, uh, all columns or whatever it's star and your database table and that'll and you'll use for that type of query you'll use git var uh, and that will return just the number of of rows found I don't know that uh, if if it is I'd love to know because uh, I didn't find that well digging into this. Thank you. Any other questions? So there is one little catch that you might run into when you're write, write, uh, writing all of your SQL statements, especially if you're familiar with the uh, like, where you're searching for, for rows that are like a value, uh, commonly used in like search results, I guess. A very simple form of doing search. There is a function called escape like that you need to use instead of or along with the prepare method. All right, so WP query and the global WP query object. So this is, uh, 
this is we're going to go into how WordPress works, how the main loop operates and why it works the way it does, and what little gotchas you might run into. So the WP Query class does double duty at the very least, it might even do more, where it handles both the querying of posts and the execution of a loop that you might see in your theme templates. So the global WP Query object is an instance of the WP Query class that was created early during WordPress execution that's dictated by the rewrite rule or the route or the context of what you're seeing on the page. So why would you use WP Query instead of just writing your own queries? Well, if you want to deal with post, this is the way to do it. If you have a really complex query, this will make it easy. There's, there's a lot, most everything in WordPress is a post. So there is a lot you can accomplish without writing your own SQL queries. So if you're just getting into theme or plugin development and you need to, and you need to access post, you start here and then you work your way towards WPDB. I did a little, I did the presentation backwards because they'll build up, we'll see. Bonus, uh, when you're using the WP query as a loop, your template tags will work. If anybody's a themer, you know that you live and die by template tags. So <clears throat> the only way to, to make a custom query and have your template tags work, well, it's not the only way, but a very easy way is to use a WP query loop. Additionally, the objects you'll, you'll be dealing with within the loop will be WP post objects, which are a little better than standard objects with properties. They have some methods that are helpful. Let's see. So now we're going to dig into the main loop, what it, how it really works, what it does, and the implications of that. If you've ever opened a template file in a WordPress theme, you've seen these loops, uh, this type of loop. We check to see if a query has po have post, and then we do the post. So these are really familiar, but what do they actually do? I'm not sure if, if you've dug into it, but I recommend it. In fact, we'll do it right now. So this is a, a copy of the function have post and the post. Uh, and the takeaway from this is that these functions are just wrappers for the global WP query object. So what we can say is that these two loops are equivalent to each other. Uh, and if you can become comfortable that, with this, then you can become comfortable with executing your own WP queries. Does anybody have a question about this before stepping forward? All right. So this is our first attempt at our own custom WP query, but it's incomplete, and we'll find out why. So we instantiate a new WP query, and then we run a loop on it, similar to what we just saw. We check if it has post, and while it still have post, uh, we during during each iteration of the loop, we run the post that will set up the next post available within within the query within the loop. Okay. So what do these methods actually do? We saw that the other functions are just wrappers for these methods. So more. So let's find out what the what's happening. Uh, have post is relatively harmless. It keeps track of the loop state, and at the very end of the loop, it'll reset the loop back to the beginning. Uh, and it's very useful, but not, not quite as much of a problem as the post can be. The post can be very destructive, and we're going to see exactly why. So WP query the post. Take a look at this for just a moment. And I've written all the hints you need in, this, in the side here. So what we want to understand here is that, first of all, there is a global post object. Be aware. And second of all, uh, we just lost it. It just got replaced by the next post in the loop. So what does this mean? Well, the implications of replacing the global post object can be very big, uh, catastrophic to some degree. Um, so the original page context, as determined by the rewrite or the route or whatever you want to call it, um, has been significantly changed. If we've executed a new WP query and we've run the post within that query, then we've lost the original WP query context 
as well as the original global post context. If we don't fix it, the rest of the page will have the wrong context for execution. So say you have a widget in the footer that relies on knowing what the current post being viewed is. Well, that widget won't have post information anymore because we've blown away the global post object and replaced it with something from our loop. Uh, but on the bright side, template tags will work. So it's actually the replacing of that global post object that makes all your templates tags work. If you dig into a template tag, you're going to find that somewhere within any of those functions, they'll run get post. And that is just accesses the global post object, and then it goes and gets the title or the content from that. So enter WP reset query, very important. This function restores the global WP query back to its original state, as well as the global post object. So this is, this is just that function exactly. We'll see that it is setting the global WP query equal to the global WP the query, which simplified is, it's the original state. It's a backup of the query. That way we can do these things. And then it runs another function that does the same thing for the, the post object, reset the post data. So now we actually have a complete WP query loop that is ready to go. We can use this code, we can use this template to write our own loops all day long and we're not going to mess up anything in WordPress. Well, there's an asterisk there. Uh, the admin side is a little different. All right. So the one thing we haven't looked at here is the arguments we can pass into WP query. And there's a whole lot of them. And some of them are redundant. Uh, but I'm not going to go into every single one. There are some resources available on the blog post, and I can point you in the right direction. When in doubt, check the codex. There's a lot of information there. So some that I use all the time, very simple ones involving strings or numbers, uh, post per page, the order, uh, the post type, order by. So I wrote it in this order so that we could actually form a, se a sentence about this query. Show me the 10 most recent posts uh, sorted by, yeah, show me the 10 most recent posts sorted by date. Um, those last four don't relate to that sentence. But you can, when you're making your, your queries for the first time, either in uh, SQL or in WP query, uh, I can't stress enough how helpful it is to write a sentence out. Write it on a piece of paper. What do I want from the database? Uh, and once you have that sentence written down, you're really close to understanding exactly what you need to tell the database. So other very useful things, if you want to get a page by its slug, uh, page name, if you want to get a, a post by its slug, name, category, tag, these are really useful. Uh, you can use these every day. You have my permission. All right. These are some other helpful arguments. You can, you can handle the post status. Or, based on the, the post parent. Ignore sticky post is important, especially as plugin and theme developers. And I'm drawing attention to it because this has gotten me, and if you don't pay attention, it'll get you. So what's going to happen is, by default, ignore, ignore sticky post is set to false, meaning sticky post will always be the first result in your query. So when you're building a website, no problem. You probably don't have any sticky post that you made as an example. But then four months later, your client's going to make a sticky post, and it's going to show up in every widget, on every wrong page throughout your entire site. So just I recommend getting the habit of throwing ignore sticky post equals true into all your queries unless you want sticky post. Another incredibly valuable one, especially when comboed, is the post in array. You pass an array of post IDs, and that's what you get back. If you combo it with order by, then you can, you can say, I want all of these posts, and I want them in that exact order. So the order by value I've set to post in, and I've provided post IDs to the post in argument. Author in, if you want other articles by this author. Uh, author in, rather, sorry. And if you need complex stuff, go to the codex. No time today. But know that you can, you can query based on taxonomy and metadata using uh, WP query. So here's an example of a complete working. It looks a lot like the other one, 
but I've provided some arguments. So what this loop is going to do is get us, by default, the 10 most recent posts. We're going to loop through them, and we're going to show their title as an H3. And now we actually know why all this works, I believe. If, if you're not sure how this knows what post title to show, uh, let me know, and I can go back over it. So we uh, instantiate a new WP query. We make sure it has posts. We start loop looping through the post. Uh, we set up the global post object, and now all our template tags work. When we're done, we clean up. We reset the query. Here is the SQL generated by that default WP query, just as an example. Now, all of this uh, isn't completely necessary, but I thought it tied well together with the previous section on writing your own queries. So if, if you look at it closely, well, if, if the light was a little better here, you can see that in this query it's saying where post type equals post, where post status equals publish, where, you know, order by post date descending. Uh, this looks exactly like what we asked it to go get. It looks like all of our SQL queries. It's not magic, it's just helping you. Oh, additionally, the, the, the query object has, has the request property with that information at any time. So if you want to run a really complex query and then see what that SQL looks like, go for it. Yes? I'm sorry. Yes. So all not all of these. Many of these arguments have default values. So you there is um, the default values. I believe, and I might be missing something here, are something like the ten most recent posts sorted by date uh, with sticky at the top. I bet I would assume, and maybe somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but right after installing WordPress, how the home page works, that's probably your default WP query right there. Does anybody know if that's incorrect? Yes. So is that the, the default that you're, you're, uh, you're reading settings and the admin? Yes. Is that the number that you're taking your queries? Yes. The reading settings, I'm not sure if that's specifically for the home page or if that's for every query. Do you know, does that update the, text, the tag pages and the categories as well? Okay. Okay, then that's changing the default essentially. Thank you. Uh, and so for the sake of the video, the question was is when you change in the reading, uh, in the reading section of the WP admin, when you change the number of posts returned, does that change, is that the default value we're talking about with posts per page? And the answer is yes. All right, so any other questions? For a pretty close here, all right. So one more example, with, uh, it's a little more complicated. What I wanted was to get the 15 posts, give me 15 posts that have a featured image. Uh, we can do that with WP Query. Uh, we're going to use a meta query. First, we're going to say post per page, give me 15. And then we're going to do a meta query where we say the meta key underscore thumbnail ID exists. We're going to execute that within a loop where we call the post thumbnail. And we're golden. We just, this much code, we just did a complex SQL query and handled its output. So there's some other functions available in WordPress that you've probably heard of. Uh, query post and get post. Uh, they're very similar, but they, they work in extremely different ways. Query post will override the global WP query object. So keep that in mind. Um, if we were to look at the query post code, which I don't have up here, it's like two lines and it says global WP query equals new WP query. So we're, we're erasing the global WP query context again. Um, but what it returns to you is just the array of posts as a result. So what that means, since it's just an array of posts and it's not a WP query object, we can't perform a loop on the results. The reason you might use query post is to change the results of the page, not to run a custom loop. Uh, get post d does very similar to query post, but it does not replace the global WP query object. So instead, it's a brand new instance of uh, WP query, 
and it also returns an array of the posts found. Neither of these can be used for loops. Git post can also take some, some slightly different arguments. So if you think you need git post, if you're looking around, um, the reason you might need git post is because you don't want to deal with the global scope of WP Query at all. Uh, just take a look at the codex page for git post, and you'll see that some arguments might be a little different, uh, some, but really, they just allow extra arguments. Any questions on these? Yes. Yes. And the core, the core that they produce the core pages. Yeah. Any data, any data you that or anything like that? You think you can still able to get it? Correct. Well, you probably could. There's a lot of hooks and filters available. Um, I mean, you can basically make it do anything. It is a function that writes SQL for you. It's got a lot of extra helper methods. Um, all of your conditional tags are also a part of the global WP query object. So is page, is archive, those are all part of the uh, WP query object. So when you run your, your own custom query, uh, right here, I could say my query little arrow is page two. And if the current page in the loop is two, then that would be true. If not, it would be false. Oh, you mean to, to so if, if you wanted to, I don't, there are probably ways. So there's a lot of filters that let you, after it's done building a big SQL query for you, there's a bunch of filters that fire off where you can change that query directly or append to it. Um, so one thing you can't do, unless I'm mistaken, with a WP query is a group by command. But with some of those later filters, you can just manually append a group by state uh, to the, a group by command to the longer SQL statement. In general, as far as I know, it's only for posts. You could probably make it do other things, but that might not be best. Right, right. Absolutely. Any other questions? Oh wait, here we are. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much.